Well, the time for an update here. I've done some of the compounding, but I've been having some difficulty as well. Uh, seems that uh, the compounding certainly works as far as taking the oxidation off, uh, but I'm getting a blotchy finish. In other words, it's uh, some of it looks like it's nice and a little bit of a sheen to it, and the rest of it is uh, got a haze on it. I learned later that I was supposed to be squirting the uh, hole with a uh, spray bottle of water while I compounded. And so I probably dug myself into a little bit of a hole here. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to uh, uh, try to take that haze off using my uh, uh, buffer along with a little bit of water. We'll see how that works. I have no idea how much water you're supposed to use, but what the heck, let's give it a shot. That's got some real. Uh, that's got some real promise here. I'm going to continue doing that. Try to get this section to the point of where I can start uh, uh, doing the polish and the wax. And then once I get this perfected, then I'll start moving down the rest of the boat. But for now, I don't want to make the same mistake all the way around the boat. So we're going to freeze the uh, action here until I can figure out how this really works. Well, it's a lot better than it was. Uh, I think I'm going to continue to uh, buff using the uh, the water and the. Uh, uh, polisher. I'm going to run it at higher speed this time though, see if that uh, uh, brings it out much. This is not the wax coat. This isn't uh, where I want to have a good uh, mirror finish type uh, look to it. Uh, this is kind of the intermediate step. It's in between compounding, uh, polishing, and waxing. Well, that's, uh, that's a lot better. I think I might have to put on a little more uh, uh, compounding uh, goop to, to get this area off. Uh, but we'll get it touched up so it's at least a, a, a level type finish rather than the uh, splotchiness. I don't think it'd do any good to put wax on uh, if I've got a splotchy surface to work with. Now, uh, a word of caution here. I have no idea what I'm really doing. I've never done this before. I've uh, read a lot on the internet and I've got uh, take, and, uh, I've read a lot on the internet and other sources, and I've bought my materials and my uh, uh, tools based on things that I've read about. So your results may vary, hopefully be better than mine, uh, but I'm just a guy trying to figure out how to get this boat to look a lot better than it was and make it easier to clean. Frankly, that's the main uh, goal here. Uh, when they uh, have a heavy oxidized surface, all kinds of junk grows on it. You get a green looking boat or even black, and it's really hard to clean. So uh, if I have got a wax coat on it, uh, I don't think the uh, film will even form, and if it does, it's going to be a lot easier to clean than it is now. Got an area right here and right here. Probably can't see it on the film, but it is uh, uh, it is part of the splotchiness, so I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, 3M uh, Restore on here. Not a mu not very much, and uh, I'm not going to use very much because I really got a very small space to put a little water on there. And we'll see how that works. I'm rubbing this in this way to uh, just spread the uh, compound around rather than uh, risk having it all uh, fly off of it. And then we'll just start it back up. Once one section is done, I move my markers to the next one. These are important. Uh, you don't want to have much more than a foot or so in between them. Uh, that'll keep you in a uh, in a nice confined area where you don't uh, uh, you don't wander off to a place you really shouldn't be. <laughs> it's uh, much easier that way. I didn't think that was important, but it turns out it is. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just apply the wax uh, paste wax by hand and uh, just make sure it's rubbed in really good. I want to cover everything, and I want to cover it thin, and I go, uh, I'm going into the next section just a little bit, and then I lag back into the prior section just a little bit. Mostly, though, I want this rubbed in real good. Don't want to leave anything exposed. I'm going to put two coats on, but still, I'd rather have, uh, rather be sure.
Now you're supposed to let it uh, haze over. And, uh, you're supposed to let it uh, haze over before you uh, continue. I've had some pretty good luck though not doing that. Notice I'm using a, uh, a uh, what do they call this thing, a random orbit uh, polisher. This is a random orbit polisher, not the rotary. The rotary spins too fast and it creates too much heat. Uh, this I've used uh, for many years on my vehicles and uh, it seems to be doing a good job of, uh, of polishing and removing the wax. Uh, and it's a heck of a lot easier to handle than that, uh, than that big uh, machine. At this point in the project, the hideaway seems to have a length on deck of a football field. Perhaps it may be time to hire out the initial compounding, polish, and wax to someone who has the tools, knowledge, strength, and skills to do a professional job. Then a few months later, I can come back and do the relatively easy stuff, refinish and wax. As in all projects, though, the knowledge gained from the experience of doing them is at least as important as the task at hand. For instance, I know every gouge, crack, and scratch on the hull. My deepening appreciation of the difference of effort required to write a check versus wrestling the 10 amp buffer for several weeks provides motivation to wax more often. Solemn knowledge knowing the best polish and wax jobs last well short of a year.